Hi students, welcome to Year 11 Chemistry and the Introduction to Quantitative Chemistry module. This is video number 17 and the last one in our little group on um, calculating the uh, concentration of solutions. This one looks specifically at standard solutions. Now we've been looking at a number of different standard solutions without necessarily using the word all the time. A standard solution is just a solution in which we know what the concentration is. So if a concentration is known, then we can call it a standard solution. It's something that we can use in our experiments. We can carry out calculations based on our confidence in the concentration that we have. The way of producing a standard solution is one that you've already used in the classroom, or hopefully you have, and uh, it involves the accurate weighing of a particular solute. Um, one of the ones that we used just for practice was sodium chloride. You may also have used things like sodium hydroxide or sodium carbonate, or a number of other things really too. And then filling up the uh, flask with solvent to a clear line and this of course involves the use of a volumetric flask and this process has just been very sort of broadly um, explained for you in the diagram that appears on this slide. This is a slightly different type of solution. Uh, you'll notice that it's a different kind of solute. This is cobalt chloride dihydrate and it's being dissolved in ethanol. So you can see that the um, solvent here is ethanol. But the method is always the same, and as a consequence of that, we need to make sure that we weigh our solute first very carefully with as accurate a balance as we have. We need to make sure that we fully dissolve that. We need to be aware of things such as when certain types of solutes are dissolved in a solvent, they may um, or may not produce uh, an amount of energy. Sometimes they are exothermic and they can slightly warm the solution. Other times they may be endothermic and actually cool the solution. We know that the um, solution may uh, expand or contract if the temperature changes. And therefore, we just need to be careful and make sure that we're looking at how we're setting up these particular solutions and um, ensuring that the bottom of the meniscus uh, is sitting directly on that line. Now this is a technique that needs practicing and hopefully you'll have a few opportunities to make up some solutions um, in this kind of a way that we can then use for experimental work. But one other thing that's worth just, I guess, briefly mentioning now before we move on and certainly something that we'll have a much more of a, a deeper look at when we start to look at the acid base unit in the um, HSC course is this concept of a primary standard. So even with careful measurement, some solutions are unstable. So whilst they may be a standard solution, or we may be able to standardize the solution um, through uh, chemical reaction, there are certain substances that we know we can use as primary standards. And when we make solutions out of these um, reagents, then we know that they're going to be very stable. Their concentrations will not change over time. For, a, prime, for a, a substance to be a primary standard, there's a couple of important characteristics that it should have. It should be pure, or at least as high purity as possible. It should be unreactive with the air, specifically oxygen in the air. Any interaction with the air that um, causes some sort of a chemical change to occur is going to interfere with the concentration of our solution. And that's not what we want. It needs to be non-hygroscopic. Now this word uh, has to do with the water in the atmosphere. Certain types of substances will actually draw water out of the atmosphere and of course that is going to significantly change their concentration. Probably one of the best examples and one of the reasons why this is not selected as a primary standard is sodium hydroxide. Even if you have been um, involved in using the little pellets to create a solution, you'll know that if you leave the little pellets sitting for any length of time, they start to become wet. And that's because they're absorbing moisture out of the atmosphere. They're very hygroscopic. Now that means they're making a little solution of themselves straight away. So obviously that is going to change the um, 
overall solution and the overall concentration of the um, solution that we're making. Other things such as carbon dioxide can also be absorbed from the atmosphere and when carbon dioxide reacts with water it's also going to change the concentration of our solution. So there are certain types of substances that fall into this category of being good primary standards and others that aren't. Probably one of the other important things is that it should have a relatively large molar mass. And that's because the proportion error when we make mistakes in measurement um, that sometimes are limited to the decimal place of our uh, electronic balance, they diminish in terms of their effect as the molar mass increases. So the proportional difference or the proportional error that we have as a result of uh, measurement mistakes diminishes as we have reasonably large uh, molar mass substances. You will be making up a few more um, standard solutions in class and just try and keep in mind the important characteristics of primary standards uh, when you're doing so. Thanks for watching.